Hey everyone, this is lesson 421 on sine and cosine ratios. Now this is a continuation of um, our right triangle uh, ratios that we talked about, I believe it was last chapter. Um, and when we talked about our trig ratios uh, last time, uh, we were focused on our tangent ratio. All right, so here's a kind of a reminder of what that was. Um, tangent ratio came from uh, our slope triangles. Um, our tangent uh, was another way of representing our slope. Um, slope of a line, right? So we would have a line, and then we have a slope triangle, and we'd figure out um, the rise, and we'd figure out the run, uh, and then we could write a slope for that slope triangle and we would use our tangent again tan was our button in the scientific calculator that would give us our ratios instead of using our trig table that we had started all right so this is a reminder of what that ratio is uh, in this case i've labeled uh, the sides uh, opposite of the angle so if you know what the angle is uh, the side opposite of that angle uh, is a key side to know or one of the legs of the right triangle and the other leg of the right triangle would be considered the adjacent uh, side to the angle All right so adjacent meaning right next to uh, so you can see that the angle and the side touch each other uh, but in this case this side and this angle don't touch each other All right so they're opposite of each other so we'll be using our understanding of our tangent ratio to look at two new ratios, which uh, we'll look at now. So the new trig ratios um, are going to be our sine and cosine. All right, so the first one uh, is, again, it's pronounced sine, uh, like a stop sign. Uh, so sine ratio, uh, you'll notice looks very similar to the tangent ratio, right? Kind of set up almost the same. Uh, the only difference is, well, one, we're using SIN. So on our scientific calculators, you'll notice in addition to the uh, TAN button, T-A-N, uh, you should also notice an SIN button, the sign button. And the ratios, you'll notice, they, even though they look the same, they're not the same. So they both have opposite on top. But this one, sine, has hypotenuse on the bottom. All right, so when we look at our triangle, so I, I kind of just copy the same triangle. Uh, we, we're still using the opposite, but in this case, we're using the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always that side uh, across from the right angle. So you could think of this little box as kind of an arrow pointing to the hypotenuse. All right, so these are the two sides that we're focused on uh, instead of the two legs. So the two legs would give us our tangent, but the opposite and the hypotenuse would tell us we're gonna use our sine ratio. Uh, and so that's uh, one of the new trig ratios. Uh, the other is what we call the cosine ratio. So looking very similar to the other ratios um, this is cosine, and you'll notice they both have sine in it. And so this co in front um, is actually um, short for complement. So this is the complement of sine. So complement meaning, like we talk about complementary angles, um, complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So we're gonna see a connection between these two ratios, uh, sine and cosine. And so when we look at how they're set up, so you'll notice we've changed from uh, our, our trig uh, button that we're gonna use on our calculator is gonna be COS, so for cosine. Uh, and then our ratio is gonna be adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse. If we're looking at our triangle, so different than opposite over hypotenuse for sine. So make note of the difference. So when we, depending on the size that you have, 
that's going to determine which ratio you should use. All right, and then I'm going to summarize this in a minute. So I just wanted to give you um, the trig ratios up front, and then we're going to practice kind of using them. So if you're really good or familiar with the tangent ratio, then these should be pretty much the same thing. So um, sine, cosine, and tangent ratios are used to set up proportions of similar right triangles. So in case you don't remember this, we were using our tangent ratio before um, to find missing sides of that triangle. And we were using proportions, right? So we're setting up an equation, two fractions equal to each other. Um, and so we're gonna be doing the same thing, but now with sine and cosine. So now we have three options. And so usually at this point, um, and it's gonna might last for a little bit of time, you might be asking yourself the question, how do you know which one to use, right? So this is the probably the most common question that comes up uh, in regards to trig uh, ratios. All right, so the first thing, and you might have seen this already, um, is, let me move this up. Um, the first thing is knowing your SOCATOA. And I think uh, you might have seen this before, um, either in the notes, in the homework notes, uh, the examples, uh, I think that you might have come across this. So SOCATOA, SOCATOA is kind of an abbreviation uh, and a way of kind of remembering our trig ratios. All right. I like to rewrite this uh, like this. Let me put a box around this. Um, so... <clears throat> Let me see if I can get this. All right, so um, I kind of like to rewrite it so that these O and H's and A and H are, and O and A are stacked up. So this, the, each of these represents your trig ratio. So there's sine, cosine, and tangent. Those are the three we just talked about. And then the O and H represent opposite and hypotenuse. So I like to write it as a fraction so that we can remember which one goes on top and which one goes on bottom. So here's your so ga toa. All right, so once you, you kind of remember this, and if you don't, it's okay, just keep looking at your notes until you don't need to, all right? So just make sure you keep um, looking, uh, looking it up. So hopefully you have it nearby, write it down in your notebook, um, uh, on your, if you're on a computer, you can put it on your screen. Um, definitely uh, have it near you until you feel like you don't really need to look at it anymore. So when we do problems involving trig ratios, you're going to have to decide which of the three do you want to use. And so um, in some cases, maybe more than one is an option. Uh, usually, we're going to focus on the case where you're going to have to decide between one of the three. And so this is where the question comes up, how do you know which one to use? And so I'm going to go over three examples of that. And so looking at, um, I have three problems here uh, set up for us. Uh, and they all have the same angle measurement given to us. Uh, but if you notice, uh, different side measurements are given to you. All right, so usually when, uh, when I recommend, or usually the strategy that I recommend uh, that students follow when they do this is to always identify the angle that you're working with, which I've done, draw a line that goes across from it, which I've done on all these, and identify the side that you have. All right, so in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is, let me use a different color for this. So I'm going to put, all right, so uh, this case, uh, this side where X is, this would be our opposite. Where is the color? So this would be our opposite. All right, so I'm going to put OPP for opposite. Uh, and then I have this two, and then so you just have to know your sides. Is this opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? You have three options. So in this case, the longest side of a right triangle is always the hypotenuse. So I'm going to label that as hypotenuse. 
All right, so look at what you have. And in this case, we have opposite and hypotenuse. So if you take the time to just label it, which shouldn't take very long, uh, draw a line, identify your opposite hypotenuse, and then look at your choices. So I have opposite hypotenuse, which of the three have opposite and hypotenuse? So I notice these two have hypotenuse and only this one has opposite. So then I would use my sine, um, I would use sine ratio for this one. So if we go through on all these and identify our pieces, so I notice again, uh, hypotenuse is given to us. So I'm gonna put hypotenuse. And in this case, I notice I have the bottom, this is adjacent, right? So I already know this is opposite, opposite the angle, but I notice there's nothing here, right? There's nothing given to us, but I do have a one over here. So I'm gonna identify that I have the adjacent. So when I look at what I have, adjacent and hypotenuse, then I look for it in my, with my choices. So, so katoa. So in this case, adjacent and hypotenuse, adjacent and hypotenuse tells me I'm gonna use my cosine. Uh, and then the last one, again, I would identify that I have the opposite and I have the adjacent. So in that case, opposite and adjacent, which if you remember, this is really just our rise and run. So that should remind you, that's gonna be your tangent. All right, so once you, you know, once you've labeled the parts, then it lo it's a lot easier to determine which trig ratio, trig ratio you're gonna use. And so the next part would be then using those to set up your equation or proportion. So I'm gonna help you set those up now. So the first one we said we were gonna use, um, I believe we said we we're gonna use sine. So then I would, be, I would do sine of 60 degrees is equal to, well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite is x and hypotenuse is two. So then I would put x over two. All right, and that's pretty much it. So there is your equation. Um, when we end up solving these, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna solve these with you uh, on this part, um, but you could put a one under this and then do your cross multiplying if you're gonna solve it. So I'm just telling you kind of how to set it up. Uh, and so the next one we said was cosine, cosine of 60 degrees. And this is gonna be adjacent over hypotenuse, right? Cosine was adjacent over hypotenuse. If you don't remember which one goes on top or bottom, that's one reason why you should probably look at your notes. So that's why I like to write it this way. It tells you exactly what goes on top and what goes on bottom. Um, also another thing to note, you'll notice hypotenuse is always on the bottom. So if you ever have hypotenuse, then that means it's always gonna go on the bottom. So in this case, hypotenuse is x, so I'm gonna put that one on the bottom, uh, but the adjacent would be on top. All right, so, and then the last one we said was tangent. So this would be tangent of 60, and this would be opposite is x, and adjacent is one. So some things to note, uh, like I mentioned, hypotenuse is always on the bottom for sine and cosine. All right, so that's one thing to note. Uh, and then opposite is always on top, right? Opposite is always on top. Adjacent is the only one where it's either gonna be on top or bottom. So that's the only one that's gonna switch. Um, another thing to note is you'll notice this X is on the bottom, which is okay. Some people always want to, they always see X and they think that always goes on top. That's not the case here. Follow the rules, hypotenuse. Um, no ma doesn't matter where the X is or whatever letter it is, just follow the pattern of the ratio that's given to you in your Sokotoa. All right, so if you follow that pattern, uh, then 
all your equations should be set up pretty, pretty well. Um, and so, um, yeah, so I'm going to leave that right there because uh, we'll solve some more problems uh, moving forward. So the tricky ones, so these were all drawn kind of the same, which makes it a little bit easier. Um, the ones that are a little bit more tricky are the ones where the triangle has been rotated or flipped, uh, but it's okay, right? We're just going to use the same strategies uh, that we've been using. Uh, and so we're going to look at three problems where you'll notice the triangles are a little bit different. Uh, they're moved around compared to the ones that we just saw. All right, so um, if you want to try to do these on your own, if you want to um, uh, see if you could solve for these um, or set these up on your own, uh, I would probably pause it right now um, and then try it and then see what if you get it correct or not. So, all right, so I'm going to, I'm going to start with the first one. And what I'm going to do is, um, like I normally do, I'm going to start by uh, marking my angle. So in this case, I have a 25. Uh, in this case, it's on top, which is okay. And then I'm going to draw a line that goes across from it. And I know every time I draw a line across, this is going to be my opposite. And the other thing that I know is that this line here where the 9 is, I should use a thicker line, so this line is going to be our hypotenuse. So as soon as I see opposite and hypotenuse, I know I have two things, then I, I should be ready to look up uh, which tree ratio. I'm going to go through, through all three of these. I'm going to label all three first, uh, and then we'll go through and, and pick our trig ratios. So same thing for the second one. I'm going to pick 62, draw a line across. And this is, I have a 5 there, so this is going to be my opposite. Uh, the other side, the x, this is going to be my adjacent. If you're not sure, if you're like, wait, is that the hypotenuse? Uh, just look to see where your right angle is. And the right angle, like I said, it has this little point. It kind of points to the hypotenuse. So this one would be your hypotenuse over here on top. But we don't have anything there, so we're not going to use that. And then the last one, uh, I'm going to start with the angle as well. Draw a line across. And this is going to be the opposite. And this x, a lot of times people in this picture, people will think this is adjacent. Because like, oh yeah, look, it's touching the 34. But, like I said, look at the right angle. The right angle kind of points to the hypotenuse. So, in this case, I'm going to label this as hypotenuse. All right. So, let me relabel these. All right, so now that I have them all labeled, then we could go through and identify which trig ratio we're going to use. And as a reminder, I'm going to put so... Katoa. All right, so Katoa. And so notice I rewrote it just so I don't have to look up. Uh, and so now I'm going to look opposite hypotenuse, opposite hypotenuse. That's the first one. So I'm going to use sine on that one. So this is going to be sine of 25. You'll notice the angle go, always goes with the trig ratio. Equal to, and then I need a fraction. And in this case, opposite is x and hypotenuse is 9. All right, and that's it. Uh, and then the next one, this is going to be, we have opposite and adjacent. So opposite and adjacent. Uh, so that means that we're going to use cosine. So then I'm going to write cosine of 62 degrees, or the angle. And now equals to a fraction. In this case, it's opposite over, wait. Did I get this wrong? Opposite over adjacent. Oh, I got that one wrong. So this is not cosine. Why did I think it was cosine? So opposite adjacent, this is going to be our tangent. All right, so let me change that. So this is tangent 
tangent of 62 is going to be 5 over x. All right, see, I was doing this too fast, and I, I kind of got tricked. All right, and then the last one, let's see what this one is. This is opposite and hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse. So this one's going to be sine again. So sine of 34, don't forget the angle, is equal to, and then the sides goes in the fraction. So this is going to be... Um, 13 over x. All right, and those are your equations. All right, so um, I'm not going to go over solving these right now because um, I think we've kind of gone over that with our tangent ratio. So you, you should be able to solve those the same way. Um, but the next lesson, I think uh, we will practice uh, solving those some more. So I'll, I'll stop at this point, uh, and that's it for now.